Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Let's Play Near Automata. The sequel to Nier that nobody expected to ever actually happen. Yoko Taro, known for his storytelling and Platinum, of course known for the gameplay, collaborated to make this happen, and it's a marriage made in heaven. Uh, Nier Automata is a wild and beautiful ride. Nier itself was a sequel to the fifth ending of Drakengard, and Automata here takes place thousands of years after Nier. It's sort of an indirect sequel. Which is why, rather than burdening ourselves with the Nier and Drakengard lore that got us here, right from the get-go at least, we're just going to jump in and discover that stuff as we move along. This can be played without knowledge of any of that stuff, but it will obviously help to contextualize some of the events. We will kind of gradually dig into that. Let's establish one thing, though. Uh, automata is short for automaton, like a robot. Therefore, Automata is probably the correct pronunciation, but that's cumbersome, so I'm going to be saying it a lot like Automata, like Automatopia, <laughs> because I'm lazy, and that rolls off the tongue more easily. Everything that lives is designed to end. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. Is this a curse? Or some kind of punishment? I often think about the god who blessed us with this cryptic puzzle, and wonder if we'll ever have the chance to kill him. This is Command. Yorha Squadron, come in. To be here. All units have penetrated the stratosphere. Autopilot systems green across the board. This is Operator 60. All units confirmed. We've passed the 50 kilometer threshold and are proceeding toward the target. Understood. Once you reach their anti air defenses, proceed to manual attack formation. Then destroy the Goliath class unit by any means necessary and gather what data you can. Understood. Ah! 12H down. All units activate manual mode and rely on visuals to evade. Already engaged. Free movement unlocked. Origin point of long-range lasers confirmed. <laughs> 11B, down. Our HO229 cancelers are ineffective. Alert. Enemy unit sighted ahead. Requesting permission to engage. Permission granted. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you think we were starting off with a melee combat? No. No, 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 no. We're losing a lot of our squad already. We got our barrel roll now, which has a plethora of iframes. Uh, the pink orbs we can shoot down just with our regular bullet spray. It will take a little bit more of a substantial attack to destroy the darker purple ones. And hey! I'm the captain now. We're only down to two of us. To be the main character and already forgot what the other one was designated as. So on top of the bullet spray, we also have heavy attacks and light attacks we can do. Multiple surrounding enemy air units confirmed. Requesting permission to assume mobile configuration. Permission granted. And just like that, we change the perspective. And this becomes a twin stick shooter! Hell yeah, I can get down with this. Perspective changes are going to be pretty frequent throughout the game, uh, both in the shooter segments and when we finally assume control of 2B on the ground for some melee combat. Oh, yeah. Think. You did not think. Also, I was promised one shots on very hard. I feel like I've been ripped off. Operator 6-0. All allied units down. The operation is compromised. Awaiting further orders. Uh, operator to 2B. We need you to rendezvous with Unit 9S and begin gathering data on the local terrain. Understood. So the vignetting for subtitles is the same as it was in Nier. I don't particularly like it because it's asymmetrical and once again we've changed perspectives. 
Not for very long, though. Because, oh no, we crashed into a wall and died! Oh man, I really blew it there. Uh, I guess we'll just have to, what's this? The Yorha Forces... Uh, the Yorha Force was annihilated, and Earth went on to become a paradise for the machines. Hmm. No, I didn't speed the credits up like that in post. Uh, and that was, in fact, an ending, so technically, we've just beaten the game. We beat Nier Automata. Great. Great job, everyone. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one. LP over. <laughs> Nier Automata being a Yoko Taro game features a lot of endings. 26, in fact. One for each letter of the alphabet. That was ending W. Broken Wings. We'll be getting all 26 of them. Most of them are just little gag endings, but a handful of them are actually serious. Move the story. Uh, the story. But a handful of them are serious and they move the story forward. Let's just... Speaking of moving forward, let's skip ahead to where we just died. And uh, we'll also bang this out on normal. Okay, we're back with a new lease on life. We're going to dodge all of the pipes and whatnot in this corridor as we fly through a very wonderful 101-esque. And as I said before, the perspective in this game is going to change very, very frequently. Um, also frequent is going to be the use of these bullet hell elements, even when we're not piloting a fighter jet mech. Even once we hit the ground and we, uh, we learn more about the melee combat, which is more like the bread and butter of the game, we're still going to have a lot of bullet hell elements, much like the original Nier. Seems to just be a Yoko Taro thing. They work it in concert so shockingly well, just like the twin stick segment here. And again, it just, it seamlessly drifts with the camera, but it affects the way that you actually play the sequences. It's not just a perspective change, it actually changes how you play it. Oh, I got a little clip there. And this is just a bunch of UFOs taped to uh, one central orb. Activating short range attack gear. Alert. Large enemy group detected. Yes, I'm aware of that. This is our first really good look at Tubi's design. Oh, and she looks pretty rad. This, though, this is my bread and butter right here. The movement. You got a double jump, you got an air dash, you have a ground based dash, which is exquisite. Let's see, let's uh, do that as well. Oh, God, it's so, so good, y'all. <laughs> That's my bread and butter. It's not even necessarily the combat, but this beautiful, wonderful, fantastical dash. Which you can fully control while you're moving. It's got a nice helping of iframes. Chain it back to back, you can use it in the air. As for the basics of melee combat, we have lights and heavies. Which you can string together in different ways. Uh, lights are your the bulk of your combos. Heavies are going to be your enders, depending on where you place the heavy in the combo. Changes which attack comes out. Simple, easy enough to understand. Uh, you can hold either the lights or the heavies to charge them up or to make different moves come out. You can fire your pod bullets, as you've been seeing, all while comboing. Oh, you can switch weapons uh, which is in which slot, so the light attacks are performed with the long sword and the heavy with the smaller katana. You can do perfect witch time dodges you saw. Not quite. Is that our target? Negative. This enemy is unrelated. Proposal. Dispatch it as swiftly as possible. You don't say. So this is not the mission target. This is a robot known as Marks. M-A-R-X. Yes, that one. Uh, he's a simple prologue mid-boss. So let's talk about the script that he was introduced with. 
Uh, that was Angelic Script, which Yokotaro has been using since Drakengard. And we've started, we have to download the program. Uh, but we've started to recover the pod program for a laser shot on top of these rapid fire bullets. Pod program download complete. Let's see that. Immaculate, perfect, great. Uh, there's a cipher for the angelic script. Anytime you see it, the words can be fully translated with that cipher, which is how we know this guy's name is Marks. In the second playthrough, I believe the script is translated automatically, but it's not like a playthrough B of Mir, where you suddenly understand everything the shades are saying. It's not that level of bombshell. Speaking of Nier, even the Black Scrawl in that game used the angelic text. Better make sure he's actually dead next time. That was dangerous, man. You're 2B, right? My name's 9S. I'm here to provide support. Copy that. So, was that big old buzzsaw the Goliath you came here to take out? No, just another defensive system. Oh. Well, uh, I guess we have to find the target then, huh? I've got a flight unit, so I'll take a look around the perimeter. All right. I'll work my way inside from the ground. All right. So let's uh, revisit some of our basic mechanics. Uh, as you saw, after we beat the, uh, the mid-boss marks, we leveled up. Here's a charge attack for you. Um... Leveling up gives you a full heal, gives you more stats, more damage, more bullet damage. This is technically an RPG, as was near before it. Uh, character action RPGs, sort of. You've seen a few times up until now, you've seen the perfect witch time dodges, you've seen the helm breakers uh, here. Yeah, a little glimpse of switching the weapons around. We'll get different weapon types as well to keep it fresh. Oh, dude, I love this so much. Um, but what you saw before is you could do perfect witch time esque dodges to trigger counter attack launchers and juggles with it. Uh, it does have the least depth of any game to wear the character action moniker because this wasn't necessarily designed to be that way, and thus there's no, like, style or ranking or score system or anything. It was just meant to fix the one fatal flaw from the original Nier, a game which is, if you discount the gameplay, absolutely great. But it's really hard to discount the gameplay because it was just so humdrum and not on point feeling. Uh, it didn't have very great game feel. It didn't have a lot of depth. The coolest thing about it, though, was the bullet hell stuff, uh, which, wow, this game really, really is a true sequel in that way. Um, there's some really cool bullet patterns and stuff like that in, in Automata. And... Now, let's take a look through the menus. We have our map. Uh, we have our quest log. We have our items. We can use restoratives. And we don't get rankings, so we don't get penalized for using restoratives. Wow. Uh, we have 6% of our pod programs. And let's look at the plug-in ships. We can actually destroy some of these ships, which include our HUD. Our HP gauge. Uh... Enemy data, skill grade, text log, minimap. We can destroy all of these HUDs to make room for other upgrades to install. Uh, if you don't feel particularly attached to using the HUD. <laughs> and then there's also this, the OS chip. Uh, it says if we remove our OS chip, it means death. What is... That can't be right. Huh, it just booted us back to right before the main menu. Did just restart the checkpoint? Caution, handle with care. Removal of the OS chip will result in death. Oh, it was another ending. That is ending T, fatal error. If you remove the OS chip, uh, you will kill yourself. And hey, there's your, your, your second ending. We've beaten the game twice now in, what, 15 minutes? 
So we did have to redo all of the stuff leading up until now, but that's only a couple of minutes worth of fighting and cutscenes. And honestly, I enjoy the feel of this so much, I don't even mind. Look at the speed and the fluidity of this. It's just immaculate. I think you get a real sense for it uh, during these 2D segments. It's just such a seamless transition as well. Uh, this is an, a kind of optional path. It doesn't reveal anything too explosive or illuminating, but worth coming back here anyway, just wore the chest at the other end of the staircase. Uh, that if we had continued up the opposite side, we wouldn't have gotten. It's a small recovery item. The inventory compared to the original Nier is much expanded. I do believe we can actually platform our way up here. Yeah, instead of climbing the stairs, why not? Also leads us to a bit of natural rubber. Uh, I believe that is for the crafting system. Oh, and once again, we've switched back to the normal 3D perspective. <laughs> oh, these two little dudes are so cute. Nothing's ever They're designed after spring toys. Also, the heads, if you played Nier, should look very familiar, and there is a pretty good reason for that, which we will get into much, much later. But you probably noticed if you played Nier that they look like uh, Emil's head, or the same mask that Yoko Taro wears if you're not familiar with Nier itself. The other thing you'll note, we've heard like three different songs up to this point, and they've all been majestic. Uh, one of them, the one that we played while we were fighting Marks, was the instrumental version of Song of the Ancients, which is one of the most iconic, recognizable songs from near, I believe it was also uh, present in Drakengard as well. But here's the thing about uh, Yoko Taro's games, they have wonderful, like, one-of-a-kind great soundtracks. Nearly unassailable every single time. Uh, the first Nier had one of the best soundtracks of all time, like a Shadow of the Colossus tier soundtrack. If you think that's hyperbole, go and listen to it, go buy it. No, it's I'm incredible. Why? Scanners like me mostly work alone. Scouting out enemy lines and all that. I don't usually get a partner. It's kind of fun. Emotions are prohibited. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. And another thing. Stop calling me ma'am. Huh? It's unnecessary. All right, then. To be it is. So it's not that emotions for these automatons don't exist. It's that they are prohibited from expressing them. Hmm. God, it's only the prologue and there's just so much I want to say. Like, it's so... Oh, I think we can get across there. Whoops, that's not the way. Even with that wall jump. The wall kick. Um, It's so refreshing to have a platinum game. A platinum game in its... Uh, all of its ludic glory. Where I can also go, like, wow, yeah, this story is incredible, it's well written, it's profound at some points. It is a philosophical take on a lot of different thematic elements. It, it, it's so good. But we're only in the prologue, so it's so hard to hold back knowing the vast treasure trove of this things ahead of us. I guess humans used to use it as a weapons factory, but now it's just crawling with machines. The enemy seems to have repurposed the facility to increase their overall machine production. So if we don't destroy it, they'll just keep coming. That should probably prompt me to talk a little bit about the timeline of this. Uh, Nier was already a post-apocalyptic game. Uh, it was a sequel to the fifth ending of Drakengard, one of the bad endings, I believe. Near Automata 
is like several apocalypses deep. This is post, 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 post apocalyptic. Society has been rebuilt and destroyed and rebuilt. Extinction level events have come and gone. Which is what makes this take on post apocalypse kind of fresh and interesting, actually. Uh, also, there is a wild amount of information, an imp almost impenetrable amount of information, uh, and story that happens in the interim between Near and Near Automata. And it is covered in such a vast array of mediums. It's covered in. Um, oh fuck, like CDs and stage plays and books and art books and all sorts of things. It is, we will eventually kind of broach that, but when it makes a little bit more sense to do so, and we'll do so gradually so it's not a big information dump. I was initially, whoops, I was initially planning on doing the episode zero of Nier Automata, just covering the events of Drakengard and Nier, and the intervening events, like of the stage play, for instance, and Grimoire Noir and all that stuff. But holy god, I don't even know where to start. I've not played Drakengard. Um, I've only read up on the stage plays and all that stuff and the drama CDs. But what's important is that we can establish a firm understanding of what's going on, the basics of the plot and all that, without it. Uh, for now at least, we can gain a little bit of context if we know about the timeline, but we don't need that context just yet, <laughs> so no need overwhelming ourselves. Uh, I will recommend though, if you want some really good coverage of the events of Drakengard and Nier, uh, check out Mr. Klemps on YouTube. He did an amazing breakdown that would put anything that I would put out about Nier and Drakengard uh, to shame. Mr. Klemps. I will link his channel in the description. Dude does insanely good work. He has some pretty encyclopedic knowledge of uh, that whole timeline. That's kind of the other thing that, that discouraged me from doing a part zero a little bit is it would very largely be me just stealing from him. <laughs> oh man, lots of parentheticals, Mr. Clips's channel, part blank of the Dragon Card analysis. Uh, for now, why don't we just destroy some itty bitty cutie little robots and enjoy and try to parse out what exactly we're doing in this weapons facility, this ancient human weapons facility. Oh, everything feels great. Uh, so the robots have gained uh, some armored plating. Woo! Ouch, whoops. Uh, some armor plating, which prevents our normal option bullets from hitting them. Uh, just doing a couple of melee attacks, juggling them. Oh god, it's so good. Gonna even do a little bit of fancy weapon switching in midair. Whoops, that was a little bit too late. Uh, hitting them will destroy the armored plating. Also, the laser will do the same thing. Uh, so that they're then open up to the bullets. Uh, if I didn't yet mention this, your, uh, your option, your pod program, is just an analog to the magic bullets that Grimoire Weiss, your ever-present companion in Mir, uh, would shoot out constantly in that game. In fact, there is a DLC skin for the pod that turns it into Grimoire Weiss. Oh, Yoko Taro loves these perspective, uh, the perspective switches. Sometimes we go twin stick, sometimes it's normal 3D, sometimes it's 2D, sometimes it's top down. And it just works. It's actually really interesting. Now watch, I've gotten clipped a couple of times with the laser because there is a bit of recovery that you cannot actually cancel with a dash. 
as with a lot of action games, there's a lot of dash canceling that you can do. Uh, but there are certain things that just don't have that option. I couldn't find anything resembling our target. Maybe they, I don't know, moved it somewhere? Jeez, she just glides. Is that? You mean the birds? Yeah, there's more plants and animals here than there used to be. Probably because the environment's changed. There's even what looks to be a rainbow. Also, you notice there's a little bit of vignetting around the uh, corners of the screen. God, this is a fascinating way to handle a post-apocalypse. Near the originals was not nearly that interesting. Uh, the setting was maybe another weak element. Uh, but even then, there were some twists to that setting because of the ties to Drakengard and the, uh, the, uh, what was it, the Selenacia or the, uh, the Salt Disease. Oh, the name's escaping me right at the second. There should be another facility across that bridge. It's a bit of a hike, but should we check it out? It's not like Command to get a location wrong. I guess even they get bad intel from time to time, huh? Hmm. I wouldn't bet on that. Marks, the hostile buzzsaw, has returned with a vengeance. And I think that is going to have to be sufficient for the time being. Because we're coming up on time, so this is a tease for the final boss of the prologue. Uh, I think it's fair to say that I admire Nier and all of the very cool things it did with its storytelling. I love Nier Automata, though. So that's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one. We will fight the entirety of the boss and find the target that we're here to destroy next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.